Do you ever have a genealogy research question that requires you to analyze a large number of families in order to find an answer or draw some conclusions? In this video, we're gonna teach you how to mine some websites in order to combine that information so you can make discoveries. Howdy, I'm Devin Noel Lee with Family History Fanatics, where we help you understand your DNA, climb your family tree, and write your ancestors' stories along the way. Good genealogy begins with a research question, and the three basic forms of research questions are event, relationship, and biographical. But sometimes our research questions are just a little bit more complicated. Today, we're going to talk about the case of John Long from Lawrence Clearfield County, Pennsylvania. And in 1850, his household looks like this. So he has himself, his wife, um, a son, and a Martha Welch. But there's a couple of problems. Number one, I don't know who Martha Welch is. And number two, he has a son William Lester Long, who is about one or two years old and not in this list. So what I want to do is mine, data mine the 1850 census to see if I can find some other Welch individuals listed in the county or if there are other Longs and maybe find my missing William. To do that, we need to get the data mine extension on our Chrome browser. If you don't have the data mining extension on your Chrome browser, then check the link in the description for a video that will show you how to do that. Now, once I have the data mining extension in my Chrome browser, I can click on that to open up the tool. And now I'm going to create a new recipe. Now we can put the recipe on the right or the left. For now, I'm going to leave it on the right. And I'm going to increase the size of the Lawrence Clearfield, Pennsylvania 1850 census record here on Family Search. And I'm going to bring up this um, index up here so we can see what we're working with. So the first thing I need to do is decide if I'm working with a list or a detail page. And this is a list, as you can see. So then I'm gonna click on row. Find row. And I'm going to come hover my mouse over John Long. And I'm gonna let go of the mouse and hit the shift key. It really took me a while to figure that out. So let go of the mouse and just hit the shift key. Now I need to try to highlight this row. And to do that, I'm going to click on these different options until the row is highlighted. If I can't get the row to highlight, then I click this select parent icon, click on that, and then now I've got this row highlighted. Scroll down and click confirm and I'm ready for the next step. Now I'm going to click columns. So the first column of data I want is the name. So I type in name and then find, hover over John again and click the shift button. Once again, I'm going to click on these options and if they don't work, then I'm gonna click this arrow button and I'm going going to keep clicking this arrow button until the field of names is highlighted. That looks good, so I'm gonna click Confirm. So I'm going to repeat that process for the other columns I want to add to this report. So I'm going to start a time loop so that you can see this sped up a little bit and I'll see you when I'm finished.
So now that I have all of those columns in place, I have the household number, the age of the person, the place they were born, and their name. I'm ready to go to the next step and get this information scraped from FamilySearch. I'm going to go find the navigation element, the part of the page that advances to the next page. So I'm going to click this little slider button right here, and that is what moves the data miner from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. So now I'm going to click on navigation, and this is the navigation button for family search, if you could see it right there. Well, I'm going to click find and go press the shift button, and that is highlighted. And then this is the code. We could turn on and off the different parts and you can see the blue moving around and now this is the right one. And we're going to click confirm. To ensure that the page actually advances, we're going to test the navigation. So paying attention to this number right here, if this works, it should become number two. So we test the navigation and now we're on page two. Test it again and it goes to page three. Now make sure you go back to page one so that you can run the data mining. So now we're going to save our recipe. Just give it a name, 1850 US Census Family Search. It just helps me know what I did and press save. Now we're going to press run recipe. So it opens our data mining screen and you can see some crazy information, but then I see John that didn't have an age, his birthplace and his house number right there. And I have it for all of those names that were on family search. What's really great is not only can we get the information from this page, but all 28. So how am I gonna do that? Well, then I click on next page and it says start page nation. Before we click that button, we're gonna tell Family Search how many pages we want it to advance. It already did one. Now we want to advance 27 more pages. It was 28 over here on Family Search. So we want it to advance 27 more pages. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna do three more pages. And what you can see in the background is it advancing the pages as it goes through. So it just advanced to page number four as it's scraping each page. So once it's finished, click close, and then you're gonna download. You're going to download in a CSV file, and it's okay if you don't know what that is. Click on a CSV file and save it to your computer. And I'm gonna give it this title, 1850 Long Question. Now what's really great about a CSV file is that you can open up that CSV file in um, Microsoft Office, Apple Pages, as well as um, OpenOffice. I use OpenOffice. So I'm going to right click, open, and this automatically goes to OpenOffice. That's the program I use. And here is all of this information. I mean, to copy and paste that into Google Sheets because that's my preferred spreadsheet to work in. Now that I have the information into Google Sheets, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I do with Google to enhance my project. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to bold this top row and I'm going to freeze it. Then I'm gonna put a data filter on it. I'm gonna highlight the columns I want the filter to go on and cre create filter. What that allows me to do is all of this information is the same, but I can sort things. So I want to make sure I get out all of the house number events like that right there. And I can delete those rows and then I can sort by house number again. The other thing I can do is I can drag these columns around. I actually like the house number over there. The next thing I can do with data mining is I can color code the household. So I can get household 214 and give it a color. 
I'm going to choose a color yellow. Then I'm going to look for each of the households that change numbers. So I know 214 is one household, 216 is a household, and I'm going to color code all the way down. I already did that here on this, um, this table sheet. There we go, that's sheet. <laughs> And what's really cool when you can look at a lot of information this way and is that I found there were 30 children under the age of 17 who were not in the household with the same surname. So you see Martha Welch here and up there is John and John does not have the same name as Martha Welch. So I saw 30 children under the age of 17 where that happens. As a historian, I keep thinking, wow, is this really common for Lawrence that there's so many orphan children or guardian children in these homes? Is it common for this area to farm out their children? What's really historically going on in 1850 in Lawrence County, just how common or uncommon is this? Now going back to genealogy, then my brain thinks, oh my gosh, when I go to 1840, when the names of the households aren't listed, am I reading those households accurately? How many of the children's that are marked with just a little one or sometimes two or three in a column are really some of these children that have different names and aren't really related as clearly to the household head? But I digress. Let's go back. So the next thing I'm going to want to do in my spreadsheet to, again, get back to that question of who is Martha Welch and where's William Long? So what I can do is I can filter in the name field to just everyone with the last name Welch. Let me do that. So first hit clear and then type the last name Welch. And you notice all of these Welch names are coming up. Now you might also have to include spelling variations, but we're just gonna go ahead and click on everybody with the last name Welch. So now I'm at the end, my last Welch, and I'm gonna click OK. And now we're filtering to just the people in Lawrence, Pennsylvania with the last name Welch. And right off the back, I see two names. I see Martha Welch, not in the house of, of other Welches. I see household 222, um, that strange uh, astrophe, apostrophe with the extra letters. That means it was a poor read on family search. We're not exactly sure what it was. It could be Oscar, it could be Edgar. If anybody wants to go look on page two of Lawrence, Clearford County, Pennsylvania, and try to figure it out, a lot of us have tried and we keep failing but I digress. But notice we have another Welch child who's not in a Welch household. We have a Welch who is 43 from Pennsylvania and another Welch who's 70 from Ireland. And you start to wonder, how are these families related? Could it be possible that this family right here is related to this family right here, but why are these two children in homes that are not their homes? That is what's really great with this data mining. Sure, you could browse through the census pages, but sometimes in a spreadsheet, when you see it this way, things start to make sense. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look for Long. Remember, we're missing William Lester Long. Repeat the process. Type in Long, find all the Longs, and put check marks off it, and then click OK. So, well, this is interesting. We have John Long, we have Hannah Long, we had Winfield Scott Long, and we have a WM, which often stands for William L. Long, in a different household number, two, two, two. That uh, sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do, and get everybody back up. You have to select all to get everybody back up. And then I'm gonna filter the household to just clear all of those. I want 214 and 222. Click on that and then let's see what's going on. 
So I have a John Hanna Winfield and uh, Martha Welch. And then I have this Reed family with a number of children that are not Reeds. We have a Mullen, a Long, a Welch, and this older gentleman with the name Love. Now, you know what's great about genealogy? Sometimes you can find your missing people, and sometimes you wind up with more questions than answers. And so now I have the question, who were the Reeds, and why is William Long in the census record over with the Reeds and not with his parents, the Longs? And why are they? do they have Martha Welch in their household? And Martha has a 10-year-old Welch in the household where William Long, is your head hurting yet? I know mine is. So I know this video was a little bit long and probably a little, a little bit confusing, but if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. And also check out the descriptions because that's where I will have links to other training on how to do the data mining tool and get it for you. If you are ready for more tips on how to become a better genealogist, check here. And for our latest video, check here.